economic and financial crisis that began in late 2008 is still with us and continues to hit BWI industries severely. The misery of mass unemployment is felt everywhere. Workers worldwide continue to lose their jobs due to privatizations, retrenchments, company closures. Many find themselves in temporary, informal, casual, and insecure working arrangements under dangerous, inhumane, and degrading conditions in violation of ILO core labor standards. The impact of discrimination based on gender, national status, race, religion, and other considerations grows. Workers fight for decent jobs, wages, better and fairer living and working conditions. Indeed, working conditions in BWI industries are far from decent and much remains to be done to ensure that workers are treated with respect. Increasingly, precarious and informal work relationships worldwide have become a barrier to organizing, bargaining, and building trade union strength. Workers outside regular direct employment contracts live in a world of insecure work, often without any social, legal, or bargaining protection. Incredibly, even those protected on paper are cautious about organizing for fear of losing their jobs. Growing global migration also affects organizing possibilities in the construction sector. Going forward, millions of workers will cross continents seeking work and a better life. The time has come for a change of direction. Greed, self-interest and inequalities need to be challenged. Multinational companies with nation-sized budgets must heed to the call of equality and dignity. Governments must also put people first. We must get people back to work with a recovery plan based on humanitarian values that will create a fairer and more sustainable world economy for future generations. We need laws and enforcement that protect workers' rights. But there is some good news on the horizon. Climate change and environmental awareness are opening the way to green driven construction opportunities. BWI sectors must seize this opportunity and be a leader in the solution to climate change. Clearly, BWI's 200 million workers can, must, and will play an important role in contributing to and reducing CO2 emissions. To tackle these crucial issues, BWI adopted a groundbreaking strategic plan at its last Congress in Lille, France. Working closely with affiliates across the world to promote international labor standards that defend workers' rights to organize and bargain collectively, promoting new laws and a liberating policy environment, as well as inciting action at the workplace, will bring its rewards. BWI is committed to change. Dear comrades and friends, the BWI Global Team and I extend greetings of solidarity to all of you. This is the first of a series of podcasts that will keep you connected with the implementation of our strategic plan. Friends, we held our Congress in a difficult economic and financial crisis. But as expected, the trade union movement responded quickly to address the enormous difficulties faced by millions of our workers who are basically victims of corporate greed. Our journey in the quest for sustainable industrial development is clear. What BWA wants is to fashion a new trade unionism, one with fairness and social justice for all members. We need a world with a strong, independent, and democratic building, forestry, and timber unions, where all workers have equal access to stable jobs, fair wages, health and safety working condition. We want an environment for trade unions where international labor standards are promoted, implemented, enforced, and where social justice, gender equality, and respect for trade unions and human rights prevail. To fulfill our vision, we must organize, bargain, and influence as never before. One, organize. By organizing the informal workers, casual workers, migrant workers, young workers, women workers, we will increase the membership of our trade unions. To do so, we need a rights-based approach, 
including strong structures and clear policy agenda. For instance, the implementation of the BWI International Framework Agreements with multinational companies will secure organizing and bargaining rights, providing decent working and living condition to workers and their families. Two, I believe that the binding agreements and stronger collective bargaining system will give our workers greater coverage. We must campaign against informal and illegal employment and push for direct employment contracts with social security and paid holiday entitlement. Three, influence policy. It is very clear to me that we need to engage into dialogue with multilateral institution in order to reach sustainable industrial policy development. There is a need to improve health and safety standards by ensuring enforcement of laws and regulation by public labor inspection. We must push for industry standard that extend bargaining coverage to all workers in our industrial sector and lobby for sectoral wage to be established through legislation or through collective bargaining agreements. We must definitely push for the inclusion of gender fair clauses. We must furthermore promote investment in and certification of vocational training, youth apprenticeship schemes, and lifelong learning. And lastly, perhaps the most critical of our future, we must campaign to totally eliminate child labor and promote rights to education. My name is Ambet. See you in September for podcast two of this series. And remember, build for change.